Uh, let's cross, though, to Susie Crozier Flintham, who's a member of the COVID-19 Bereaved Families for Justice group, and she joins me now. Uh, very good to talk to you today. Uh, what are your thoughts today on, on hearing this response from the Privileges Committee? I think it's overwhelmingly unsurprising. This is nothing that we didn't already know. Um, I think the most shocking thing is, is the flagrant disregard that Johnson is showing towards the Privileges Committee. Um, the, the sort of attack on, on democracy that seems to be going on. But no, I'm, I'm not surprised by anything that the committee has found because I already knew. Um, we saw the photographs, we heard him lying to Parliament. We already have the evidence in front of us for him to try and deny it is absolutely risible. Um, and also, you know, particularly shocking is a statement from um, the second report where there's talking about um, not adhering to the rules inside number 10, but making sure they pretend they are when there are cameras present. Um, I mean, this is this is someone who is supposed to hold the highest honour in the land, who is embarking upon completely self-serving behaviour at the expense of our lives, essentially. I mean, when we, when we look at, at how Boris Johnson handled COVID, he, he was a man who was very, very ill himself. He, you know, he was in a perilous situation in hospital. So a lot of people will say he knew what a lot of families, you know, like yourselves, were going through. He was there at the sharp end. He, he, he felt it. He was just doing what he thought was right. Well, if that is the case, he should have demonstrated a lot more empathy. If he was so ill that he almost died, as he claims, then surely he understood just how severe this virus was and is and just exactly what the risks were around you know, having indoor gatherings and being in close contact and sharing breathing space and all of that sort of thing. He should have understood from a very deeply personal level just exactly what a danger there was. Um, so I'm, I'm afraid I don't I don't hold truck with any argument because he all, almost died that informed his decision. Because actually, if he was as ill as he says he was, then he should have made better decisions to keep people safe, knowing how dangerous and how threatening the virus is. Um, and it sounds to me like more Johnson obfuscation. Do, do you hold in truck with, with, with the, the thoughts as well that, that people may say, well, you know, they may have been doing something wrong inside number 10. They may have not been, you know, abiding by the rules. But overall, the rules that they implemented and the introduction of the vaccines were effective, some would argue. Um, and, and by, you know, that almost that is the bigger thing. That is the more important thing. What do you make of that? Um, I think the point is that, you know, by March 2020, we'd already seen across the world the effects of the virus. We had those dreadful scenes from Spain, from the care homes in Spain, um, you know, as well as news coming out of China and other countries. So, you know, the fact of the matter is that we didn't do enough. We didn't do it quickly enough. And any other argument, you know, that, OK, vaccine rollout, yes, that was absolutely fantastic, it, utterly amazing. And but actually there were measures that we could have put in place a lot earlier and a lot harder that we just simply didn't do. 